Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show, that I want to start with a question. How often, when you are communicating by email, when you are talking to someone on the phone or even texting, do you feel misunderstood? How often do you feel like what you're saying is not being received the way that you are intending to send it? If you're nodding your head, and if this happens to you quite often, because you know that it's a very particular lack of satisfaction when you're communicating, but you feel like the other person does not actually get what you're saying. So if you're nodding your head, then this video is for you because it's all about effective communication. I'm giving you seven steps that you can take to ensure. It's basically a formula so that you can ensure your side of the street is clean when it comes to communicating effectively and powerfully. So before we get into it, make sure if you are new to my channel that you say hello, introduce yourself in the comments because we are a friendly group. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the icon bell so that you get notified every time I roll out something new, which is every Tuesday. I do my solo shows and every Thursday I have my interview shows. All right, let's move it on into today's content. Let's start with why is communication so hard? right? Why? Well, part of it is it's what we learned. So think about the home that you grew up in. All of us have, you know, I love to talk about blueprints because it's true. We also all have a communication blueprint. And so I want you to think about the home that you grew up in. What did you learn about communication? Uh, in the home that I grew up in, communication, if it was positive, was pretty direct. Communication, if there was a problem, was pretty obtuse, not direct, confusing, passive aggressive. Nobody wanted to talk about it, which doesn't mean that the problem wasn't there. It just meant that we were not effectively talking about or managing the problem. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that, you know, when my parents were coming up, where my family grew up, which is just like your downloaded communication blueprint has everything to do with your family and where you grew up and where they grew up and the time frame and the social norms at that time. I mean, there's a lot of cultures, U.S. being one of them, depending on where you live, that directness is considered gauche, is considered crude, is considered rude. You know, think about the South in the U.S. I mean, they've mastered the art of passive-aggressive communication, where you literally need like a decoding ring to figure out what the hell someone is saying. So if they're talking about someone, and they want to say that person is a hot mess, they'll say, bless his heart. And I didn't know that until I started traveling around the US. And I was like, why do people keep saying that? Because it doesn't seem sincere, of course, because it wasn't sincere. It's in place of saying, I think the person's a jerk, or I think that they're a mess, or I think that they're an idiot. So it's like code, right? Again, we don't want to talk in code, though, to the best of our abilities. If we're talking about our actual relationships that we care about, being as clear as you possibly can gives you the best shot of getting your needs met, of having what you want to happen, happen. So let's just start going over. What are these seven steps that you can take? The seven C's of communication has been around, I'm going to say, since 1952, I think. And this was coined, that phrase in this framework, by Scott M. Cutlip and Alan H. Center. Those are the people in 1952 who came up with this. And I have to say, it still stands up today. Now, a lot of their stuff was sort of more about business stuff, but I think it all melds together. Let's start with, if you want to be clearly understood, you need to clearly express what it is that you're saying. So clear, right? That's the first C, is how can you be clear about what it is that you're saying? That means your objective, the person absolutely knows, and it's easy to understand. Because a lot of times, if it's hard to ask for what you want, 
there's a tendency to build a wall of words between you and the other person. Like say way, way more than is necessary, but also, you know, long way around the barn to sort of get back to what it is that you're saying. And the same way, have you ever been in a conversation with someone and they're telling a story and they keep interrupting their own story to be like, I can't, was it last Wednesday? Was it Thursday, Tara? What, what day? Like, right? If that information that you're trying to find, like what day of the week it was, if it does not impact the end of the story, nobody cares. And what happens is the moment you start sort of digressing into all of this unclear information, you start losing your audience. Because the person is like, who cares whether it was Tuesday or Wednesday, unless that impacts the story, which generally it may not. So we only want, we want clear information, but we want to be, the second C is concise, right? We want to avoid using redundancies. It, it is unnecessary. And again, there's an insecurity when we're not being concise or we feel like we need to say the same thing. I think about when I first started blogging back in 2010 or whenever it was, and I was a young writer and I was insecure and I would say the same thing like 15 different ways it is so unnecessary, my God. I mean, we went back and cleared up most of that so you won't find too many of those rambling blogs on the interwebs. But I can see that as I became more and more confident in my ability to communicate with clarity and in a concise way, I didn't feel like I was needing to, to build a case for what I was saying, that I was, I was building a strong case, but I didn't need to redundantly build a case. The, another, the third C, especially if you're talking about business stuff, is concrete, meaning that what you're saying needs to be credible, right? It needs to be backed up with data. And if it's not, you need to be clear that you're talking about your observation, right? Concrete means that we are not posing our opinion as a fact, that we are being clear and concise, the first two C's, about what it is that we are presenting to the person. So we want concrete data or information if it's work stuff. And it's actually the same in personal too, right? We still want concrete information that we're talking about. The fourth C is that it should be complete, right? That it should contain all of the relevant information. Now that doesn't mean all of the information. That just means all of the stuff that the other person needs to know. A lot of times when I was younger, I would I was very impatient. I mean I still am, but I've worked on it obviously in the bunch of decades that I've been alive. And so I would want to just send off the email and and sort of be like and then I'll get back to you when I hear from this person. And what I've learned in being a more impactful and powerful communicator is that wait until you have all the information. Right? Wait until it can be complete. A, so that you're more efficient, right? Is it more efficient for me to have the person go back and forth with me five times when it's not necessary? No, I could have just waited. So it being as complete as possible is important. And this might be less so personally, but certainly when it comes to business communication, I think that this is a really valid and important thing to think about. It also has got to be right right? It's got to be correct. Meaning, follow the rules of grammar, people. You need to know the difference between their, T-H-E-I-R, and their, T-H-E-R-E. People will be really judgmental. And here's the thing. There's spell check. I have Grammarly downloaded on every computer, any device that I work on. Because, listen, I'm, I wasn't an English major. But I do think if you have grammatical or spelling errors, even in personal stuff. I mean, personally, I, I, I can use shorthand with my close people, right? 
I hope they're not judging me. Maybe they are. But but if you're talking about people you don't know that well, we really want it to be correct. So get clear. And it's so easy to do that these days, you guys. It's like we don't even need to know it, sadly, because of all the apps and all of the, the help that we can get. So get Grammarly. It's worth it. And spell check everything that you're sending out. And this is also true when you're communicating on the internet. Like if you're communicating, you have an online brand, let's say, like I do. It's important. All of these seven C's, all of these steps that you're taking to be a more powerful and effective communicator, they apply to social media. And I'm not talking about, you know, there's colloquialisms that make sense, that there's memes, there's things where it doesn't have to be perfect on social media, of course. But unless you're doing it for humor, you don't want to make spelling mistakes. You don't want people to know that you don't know the difference between there and there, right? And if you don't know the difference, you need to, right? These are things that, especially people who don't know you, I've always been a very bad speller, just naturally, just I mean, in my young life, obviously, there was a spell check because there wasn't even computers in my young life. But it's something that I went out of my way after not doing that for so long and having people point out to me that I was like putting things out, like sending correspondences with errors in it. And that's like embarrassing for somebody to be pointing that out to you. So there's no excuses is all I'm saying. We live in a modern world. You got Grammarly, you got spell check. Okay, so moving into the last two, you want your communication to be coherent, right? It has to be relevant. It has to be connected to whatever paragraphs you are adding to your correspondence. It has to make sense, not just in your mind, but it has to actually make sense with the whole. And when I think, at least what I've learned over the years of doing this and communicating and having a business is that less is more. That so much of the time, when I think I need to say a lot, I will put it in draft. I will go back in 24 hours and I will be like, is there a way to make this leaner than it is so that it's more precise, that it's more exactly what I want to say? For me personally, maybe because I'm an empath, maybe because I'm a highly sensitive person, being understood succinctly or accurately or precisely is extremely important to me. So it's not enough for Vic to just be nodding his head if I feel like he's sort of zoning out. I really need him to understand what I'm saying. (laughs) Poor Vic. I'm not a day at the beach. I could tell you that much. But I am listening to him as intensely as well. And there's something about being misunderstood to me personally that is really painful or annoying or irritating or agitating in some way where I need to keep having the conversation until I make sure the other person understands me or I feel like I've done the best that I can. I mean, listen, there will be people in your life and all of our lives who are really committed to misunderstanding us or there'll be people who are really literal. Vic is a very literal person. If I'm using voice to text and there's a mistake, they misunderstood, right? Instead of putting Vic, they put Nick. I mean, A regular person would know, oh, you were probably using voice to text because we've been married for 25 years, so you probably know my name, right? And Vic would literally write back and be like, Nick? Who's Nick? I'm like, okay. I was clearly using voice to text. Why do I have to explain that? (laughs) But some people really are wired that way. I honestly don't think Vic is doing it. Sometimes I think he's doing it to be funny or to sort of rib me, but honestly, that's the way his brain works. And so again, clear communication, because if each of us are left to our own devices, you know, we we come at communication, all of us from a very specific way. In the guide, I'm going to give you some questions for you to answer for your downloaded communication blueprint. So you can really start to look at why you communicate the way that you do specifically, because all of us are heavily influenced, of course, by family of origin, culture, country, social norms, all of those things impact the way that we communicate. But I also want you to look at where are you frustrated about your communication style? Where do you not speak up? 
where do you not communicate at all? Because you're worried about how the other person is going to perceive it. And can you get better at communicating? And of course, the answer is yes, you can by trying, by putting your intention in there. The answer is you definitely can. So the last C that we're going to cover is courteous. So if you're communicating, this is business. I mean, ma- mainly business. I mean, I feel like with my close people, I am courteous, but I don't feel like I have to be overly polite or formal with the people that I communicate with all day, every day, obviously. But with business and with personal, you want the tone to be friendly, but but without undertones of hostility or passive aggressive vibe. Because again, if we're talking about how can we be powerful communicators, well, then we're going to be more direct and less indirect, which is what passive aggressive communication is. So I'm curious to know from you, what did you learn from your family of origin about communication? How do you consider yourself as a communicator right now? Will you try to use these seven steps, the seven C's of communication? Like what you're really using them for is when you're writing something, it's looking and saying, is it clear? Is it concise? Is it concrete? Is it complete? Is it correct? Is it coherent? And is it courteous? Right? That's literally a checklist that you can use against your correspondence to see if something is missing. So I hope that this was helpful to you. If it added value to your life, please let me know, share it with the people in your life. I hope you guys have the most amazing week communicating powerfully and empathically. And as always, take care of you. I also want to say thank you so much for all of your questions and your comments. I super duper appreciate all of them. And you know, I read everyone, you know, normal people who are watching Netflix, me, I'm just hanging out on YouTube, reading your comments. So and I love to highlight them. So this is from Olivia LC, under the video, the truth about mother wounds, and three ways to heal. And Olivia says, another awesome video, I felt like you were reading my story out loud in a way, everything you said completely resonated with me. My mother and I shared a love for the performing arts. Thank you, Terry, for making me feel validated. Well, thank you, Olivia, for taking the time to leave a comment. This is how other people find the show. Other people will look at what you said and like, oh, I didn't watch that whole thing. I should go back and watch it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of our crew. I really do appreciate you.